And now, on with the show. A few months ago, I was riding on the back of a border border. A female rider whizzed past on a huge motorbike. It's an unusual sight. I admired her. My border border rider, on the other hand, <coughs> thought differently. He looked at her, laughed and said, Ha! Katoyomuyayo. Which means she's up to no good. I asked him why he would think, you know, that about her. And he said it was inappropriate for a woman to be riding a bike. I told him that's not right. He shouldn't be thinking like that. Unfortunately, so many men in our society think like that. But it's not only men who look down on women. Women do it too. Another time, I was waiting for the bus with a couple of other people. It was close to the university, so there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of young people around. So a young woman drives past. There was a bit of traffic, so we all had a good look at her. There was a woman standing next to me. She said in a very condescending way, there is no way she could have, that the young woman could afford that car. <coughs> she said, that she must have slept with a rich man to get that car. I was saddened by this statement. This woman did not know anything about this young woman, but she assumed that she had slept with a rich man to get the car, that she had had transactional sex. You know, we live in a society that has been blinded by gender stereotypes, that women should not be riding bikes, that women cannot provide for themselves unless there is a rich man. The undervaluation of women is entrenched in our society. This is the same society that believes that men should, should be allowed to beat women. A recent survey by a Ugandan charity found that 70% of men and 60% of women think that it's okay for a man to beat their wife if she denies him sex, if she burns the food, if she goes out without telling him, or if they have an argument. This is the same society that thinks women should, you know, be in the kitchen and the bedroom. The same society that thinks women should look to marriage as the ultimate goal in life. And if you're not married at a certain age, then you're up to no good. I've been asked several times why I'm not married at my age, and I've been told to start worrying about it. <laughs> my cousin even asks if I would make a good cook if I got married tomorrow. You know, these are the kind of stereotypes we face every day. You know, family, friends, and society. The media sort of mirrors our society and its attitudes towards women. When you open a women's magazine, they'll always tell you, ah, your clock is ticking, find a man. Oh, this is how you look good for a man. Ah, this is how you can be submissive to keep your marriage, you know. And it's more like they're telling us this is how you can live under a man. And our society is, is already echoes what the media, what the, sorry, what the society already believes. But it also has the ability to form and reinforce these attitudes, the behaviors, and beliefs that society already has. It rarely questions the narrative that men are more important than women. So we end up with a society that believes so. I walk the streets of Kampala every day, and men, make misap you know, inappropriate and invasive remarks. You, come and be my wife. You, I want to have sex with you. If you ignore them, then they're like, ah, you prostitute. They look at us and all they see as sex objects, not people, you know. And the media has a way to construct our bodies and, and makes, you know, turns them into spectacles that are supposed to hold and gain attention. In 2010, I left the Daily Monitor to, and joined another organization. 
and a tabloid newspaper ran a story and said that, oh, and referred to me as the sexy bumzilla who was going to work in the US. Apart from getting the facts wrong, would they ever write about a man in that same tone? You would never read that uh, a man who is changing, you know, job to job is muscular or has a great six pack. <laughs> no. And this is, you know, this is what we go through every day. And mine is an obvious case of sexism in the media. But the media also has a way it packages sexism and makes it look like a compliment. When you read about accomplished women, you know, you, you read statements like, it takes a tough woman to do this job. Or, she is a tough duty. Or, she is the man of the year. Just because she did a job that sexists think is supposed to be done by a man. But who knows what a tough duty is? Anyone? Neither do I. Well, the media also is always quick to, to identify us by you know, parenthood or marital status. I was reading an article about uh, women bankers, and, it, and the writer said of one of them, she remains a mother and wife at home. Another article that was about a woman who had succeeded in industry said, you know, question that, question how a mother of three had ended up in the business of steel manufacturing. They would never ask that of a man. When you read about men, you're reading about independent, autonomous, and dominant people. When it comes to women, it's a completely different picture. But women are making progress in this country. They are, run, they are running thriving businesses. One ran the Uganda Investment Authority. <laughs> we have a woman running the Kampala City Authority. A female athlete won gold for Uganda nearly 10 years ago. That was Dokas, that is Dokas in Zukuru. She actually won two golds in 2005 and 2006 during two different world championships. She returned home a hero, but her athlete image was quickly moved into a different one by one of the glossy magazines. If you all remember, they, you know, dressed her up, put makeup on her, put lipstick, made her wear a wig, to, you know, to make her look sexy and attractive to you, the readers who buy the magazine. When Stephen Kiprotich won the men's <laughs> Olympic marathon, we see him on the TV and the billboards. His athlete image is still intact. You know, he's all athletic, he's running, he grabs a bottle of water, he keeps running, he keeps running. <laughs> he won a gold and he's heralded as an athlete. Dokas and Zukuru won a gold and she was turned into eye candy. It seems like women's value is at a greater part, you know, based on our appearance and sexuality. I think there is just, you know, there is nothing more beautiful than one's real picture. But when you qualify as beautiful in the media, they start questioning, do brains and beauty go together? <laughs> I read an article recently, I was actually dismayed to read it, you know. They were asking, do beauty and brains go together? And there, were, there was a picture of one of the most prominent women in this country. It's unbelievable. You know, has anyone ever read anywhere, you know, when they're asking, do handsome, are handsome men intelligent? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, it's a given. Thank you, Jackie. But for the women, uh, if she's beautiful, there is no way she's, she's going to make it in life. <laughs>
with the brains has to be about her body, her sexuality, her appearance. And we've let the media get away with these sins because we've let society get away with the same sins. One day I was walking down the street with my cousin and we passed by a group of men who were seated on a bench. One of them tapped my butt. I have never been furious in my life. I was furious, I was angry. I turned around and he was wearing this smile on his face. <laughs> like he had done something clever, like he, you know, he looked happy. He didn't know that it, it, it had bothered me, no. You know, and he didn't think I was going to do anything. But I slapped him right across the face. <laughs> and that literal smile faded off his face. And to him, it was a much needed lesson that women do not like to be touched by strangers. Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We don't like it. And his friends laughed at him. I hope he learned a lesson that day. And I hope he hasn't done it since then. But I'm not saying that we should all go around punching men. <laughs> that won't achieve much. All I'm saying is we shouldn't sit there and be all pretty and compliant. You know, the media is writing about us. But we need to stand up and you know, challenge these beliefs and assumptions. We need to tell the media, stop portraying us as sex objects. To the men and women out here today, what are you going to do tomorrow when you pick up the newspaper? What will be running in your mind? You know, I am glad I tasked the border man to explain why he would think that you know a woman can't ride a bike. I regret not saying anything to the woman who said that a young woman could not drive her own car. You know, I know it's easier said than done, but. We need to start somewhere, and I hope we all find a place to start. Thank you.